Good morning and in today's video I'm actually going to take you through this image that you see on the screen from this starting point which is the raw image straight from the camera through to a final image. I don't know what I'm going to make from it yet but I'm just going to take this image and you're coming along with me for the journey. So I'll talk you through the pluses and the minuses of what I do. You'll see the mistakes as they happen in real time and we'll see if we get to an image that's uh, presentable at the end of it. I think this image has the potential for that so let's see if we can get to that potential okay so I've loaded the image up into Lightroom it's here um, the first thing is I always shoot several stops below so my images are always dark because I know my Sony can actually recover the um, recover the highlights adequately so or recover the shadows in this case um, I don't like blown highlights so as you can see in the sky area there's nothing blown out or even close to blown out so there's plenty of detail there that I can bring out this foreground or background mountain and this foreground rock are obviously the key players in this picture uh, they're joined together by this little stream meandering into the distance and disappearing over the edge of the hill here down to surprisingly a waterfall that's in one of my other shots um, there's a little bit too much information on the right hand side and there are some walkers along this track um, which I'll clone out. So the first thing I always do is I set auto. Now basically what that's going to do is it's going to basically make the histogram more or less fill the whole area that it's occupying rather than being massively dark as it was a few moments ago. The first thing I notice after it's done that is this area to me looks blown out and that's confirmed by the arrow here showing that it's blown out so I'm going to pull back the highlights and I'll pull back the exposure a bit until I lose that little blue indicator there now that still looks slightly overblown here more blown out um, it probably isn't uh, but it looks a little bit as if it could be so I'll work on that in a minute we also have um, some areas here which are showing in blue because I've got this highlight set up. Those are areas of black which are actually black black. So I need to raise the blacks until that little arrow disappears which is about there. So now there are no areas that are actually blown out um, highlights and there are no areas that black isn't correctly black. So that's the starting point. The next thing I want to do with this is I want to uh, put a mask on the sky because I want to actually make that a bit more contrasty so I'll pick up a big brush here with the brush tool and I'm just basically going to paint in roughly the sky area like that and you can see immediately it's added a lot more contrast to the sky and it's also given it a slightly brown hue here which I'm not overly happy with so if we click on the effect button here it resets all of the values in these different um, sliders so that effectively there's no effect of this mask I've just put on so as an example I'll show you if I just move one of these excessively you'll see it actually is only affecting the sky so what I want to do is I want to dehaze the sky slightly just to give it a bit more texture and a bit more impact and make it a bit more foreboding and that's probably more or less where I want that to be so turn that off now the next thing I need to do with this is this particular mountain is too black this whole area here is a little bit underexposed relative to the rest of the image so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just up the shadows on the overall picture a bit which has brought the rock in the foreground down here quite nicely um, into a balanced position I think so I need to lose this bit of rather annoying information here so I'm going to pull the crop handles in and I'm going to probably lose a bit more of the sky I've got a problem down here this rock is sort of rather annoying this one's quite nice it's sort of pulling you in in this direction towards the center of the picture and the two main actors which is this large rock and this mountain so I'm not unhappy with that one this one I'm not perfectly happy with and there's one in the corner down here which isn't improving things so I'm just going to pull that side in a bit which loses the rock on the left hand side and it leaves this one still pulling you into the image slightly so that crop works reasonably well so we'll make that the actual cut of the crop the next thing I've got is some rather annoying walkers here 
well, they're not annoying, they're just, I don't want them in the image. So what we'll do is we'll clone those out. So I'll set the clone tool up. And hopefully, if I pick the right source part for that clone, it should make them disappear. I've got it set to heal, I need to have it set to clone. We'll do that again. Um, heal doesn't do quite the same thing as clone. So let's just, it's set to clone now. Do that. And it's still not getting rid of the walkers properly. Okay, so let's just highlight that and get rid of it. I'll leave the walkers there for a moment. Ah, oh, opacity is not set to 100%, that's why that didn't work. Okay, so I'll put it back to heal and I'll turn the feathering down because I don't need it feathered quite as much as that. I'll get it right in a minute. Yeah, that, that sort of feathering is fine. So if we just paint them in now and try again, magically they disappear. And if I choose the source location for the cloning about there, oops, it's just overshot slightly. That'll do nicely. No one's going to notice that little kink there. It could just be a rock. There's some more walkers there. I'll get rid of them as well. And that. That's perfectly fine. No one's going to notice that. So the image is starting to come together now. Um, I've still got this dark area to actually work on. So what I'll do with that is I'll pick up a, a brush tool and we'll set it to be that sort of size, maybe a bit smaller. Reset all the effects the brush tool's having and carefully paint in roughly this area. I've got the auto mask feature turned on on the brush. So it should, and if I'm careful with the, uh, the thumb wheel, I can alter the size of the brush while I'm actually going across the area. So I want it to sort of come into this area. Okay, so I don't know where that mask is yet. So what I need to do is, um, let's see what effect it has. So, okay, if I just randomly change one of these sliders, we can see it's basically working on the area I want it to, but it's actually not working on this area. So I'll paint that bit in as well. And I'll just be a bit more careful over this end. So now, I've got the ability now to actually bring that whole area up. So it's not got any highlights in it. It does have shadows in it. So I can bring the shadows up a bit. And I want to dehaze that to make it a bit clearer, bring up some local contrast, and then we'll bring up the shadows a bit more. Bring up the whites a little bit. And that mountain is now starting to look a fair bit nicer, I'm thinking. I'm going to put some clarity on it to give it a bit more punch because it's, um, it's looking a bit washed out and hazy in the distance. So I've raised the clarity slider. So I'm happy with that mountain as it is now. I might just add a little bit of a highlight to it in the form of uh, some supposed sun. So I'm going to actually put this tool, feather it less, make it less dense. I'm just painting a little bit of light on this face of the mountain just to give it a little bit more sort of, of a 3D feel to it. I think that's probably it. Let's just see a little bit more too much. Yeah, that, that probably will work. I'll just raise the shadows slightly on that and it's just given a little bit more sort of 3D feel to that perhaps a little bit more light in it not a lot yeah oh, that's not too bad okay so I'm quite happy with where we've got with that the next thing I'm going to tackle is the rather dull dowdy look to the picture so I'm going to bring the saturation and the vibrance up a little bit after all, I was there and I did see it and it didn't look quite as dull as the, uh, the image that I first pulled in looked like. So that's brought that up. 
um, I'm going to put a bit of a vignette on it which just pulls the eye in towards the center a little bit more and it makes the corners a bit more uh, oppressive you can see the effect of that but you can't see it so with it not turned on the eye can lead out of the pictures in the corners but with just a little bit of vignetting it pulls you more into this central area here now I want to emphasize this little stream a little bit more so I'm going to pick up the brush tool and I'm going to make the whites and the highlights a bit higher so that the, the, the water, the, uh, the froth in the water and the motion is a bit more readily seen. So let's just broadly paint in this area of the picture. And then having got that masked, I'm going to increase the exposure of that very slightly just to bring out the water. So if my mouse will work, which it doesn't want to, Okay, so that's now looking a bit better. The stream is taking a more prominent role in the picture. I'll just add a little bit more to that. So we've got, we've, I'm effectively creating a leading line pulling the picture together by doing this. And I'm adding to that mask the water that's in the corner here as well. A little bit and this little bit down here. Now that's a little bit... Yep, that's, um, that's starting to look quite nice, I think. So I'll finish with that tool. And I could almost say that's finished now. Um, this rock needs lightening a little bit, I think. So what I'm going to do is pick up this tool. Again, the brush tool. I'm just going to lighten the rock a little bit just to give it a little bit more presence in the picture because it is the main foreground part of the image. So let's just lighten it a little bit. And that, that looks about right, I think. And I'm going to increase the sharpness on there a little bit to make it a bit punchier. So I'm going to increase the texture on the rock as well. So I think that's probably as far as I'm going to go with this image. That's 12 minutes or just over 12 minutes worth of processing on that. So that's the image that's what I want from that image that gives a message that I'm happy with um, I'd appreciate any comments below uh, and if you like this processing and this video please give it the thumbs up um, and um, I look forward to seeing you the next time or at least not see you because I'm doing this with a screencast this time but talking to you next time anyway thanks for watching